it's not about what future holds about green building. I think uh, building green itself is a future for India. Hello viewers, you are watching Moja for Industry, India's first mobile journalism platform for industry. Today we are proud to host Ms. Mala Singh, a leading green entrepreneur in India. She is the chairperson and managing director of Mumbai-based PEC Solutions Green Designs Private Limited. She is a well-known personality specialist for green building projects and smart cities. She is an accredited green building professional and total sustainability advisor for corporates, government organizations, industrial and various kind of other building projects. Today she is going to tell us uh, what the future holds for the green building industry in India. So thank you so much ma'am for being here and giving your time out of your busy schedule. And uh, to start with, uh, you have been uh, you. regarded. Yeah. You have been regarded as a green crusader. What inspired you to start your business in this particular segment? In this particular sector, the inspiration is from your passion first, because your mindset, the way you feel, you know, for the environment, the way you feel for the betterment of society and community. So then how you would like to uh, put your contribution in your business, not only for the commercial perspective, but also, you know, taking care of this green business, but also taking care of the betterment of community not just from the commercial perspective. And also, you know, from my childhood, because I belong to Himachal Pradesh, I was born and brought up there. So maybe I'm from more greenery and more cleaner environment. So when I shifted to Mumbai, so uh, I realized that, you know, there is a really utmost need to do a lot to look into various aspects of environmental where a lot of degradation has already been happened exploitation of resources are there and a lot of lot of you know you can see that uh, the kind of problems we are facing today including covid now so i think then i realized that uh, the business i will do in my life which is not for the commercial perspective but also for the society and betterment of community so that thing inspired me and you know uh, basically i pursued this business uh, keeping in the mind not just as a profession but as a passion as a worship so, uh, could, yeah. could you name some of the landmark projects what you did so far, uh, which have created really some differences in the society as a well? whole? I think uh, when I started my journey in uh, 2007, so then was only first project, you know, when we started. And uh, because it was very, very challenging to uh, convince, you know, builders and people to adopt green practices and to get a green building uh, approach in their project. So I would say the first government uh, project in Gujarat, which was very close to my heart, one was Raksha Shakti University, and then Gujarat Pollution Control Board. So they were my pioneer project, you know, when I started my journey. Some of the prestigious are like, I would like to share with you, uh, NIT project, which we did in uh, Vijaywada, Andhra Pradesh. It is a large campus which is 100% on solar energy. That is a platinum rated project. And one of my beautiful educational campus, uh, that is UWC Mahindra College Pune. So we transformed entire existing campus into a green campus. So we took a lot of initiative and converted that existing campus into green. Then my prestigious project was the first net zero energy project, which is a Globicon terminals which is in Navi Mumbai itself, warehouse facility. Then uh, we are also the having prestigious projects like I am Nagpur we are doing, which is a large campus. We are doing IIT Dharwar, which is a more than 300 acre campus we are doing. Then we have uh, AIMS, All India Medical Institute. Uh, we are doing Nagpur. And my company is also involved in Kolkata AIMS. So there are two AIMS projects, healthcare projects for Government of India. Uh, we are involved and uh, there are other, a lot of healthcare projects we are doing in the COVID uh, scenario now. Some of them are in Uttar Pradesh, some are in Bihar also, and some are in Guwahati, Assam and those areas. So I think uh, apart from that, I feel uh, some of the prestigious are State Bank of India uh, existing concrete bhavan we recently did. Just, I think, last month we got the certification for that. 
because that journey was very special. We started from 2017 uh, with, the, I would say, uh, the kind of results we received. That really gives me a much happiness and satisfaction. Uh, we got 40% energy saving and uh, more than 2,500 carbon dioxide tons, you know, in terms of unit, if you say, uh, emissions we reduce in that project and 40% water saving. And uh, yeah. if you look back when it, uh, during the past decade, uh, green was more very much restricted to the residential projects and few projects related to the hospitality and all. And now today, as you mentioned yeah. rightly, that it's you know, diversified into every vertical, whether it's airport to, you know, to a banking complex, to an educational institution, it's everywhere, or even in warehousing. So how do you see the green has transformed over the years? And uh, uh, what actually bringing the stakeholders, all stakeholders to get into the green or actually ask for green? If you see the green building moment in India, uh, I think it's very prominent. It started in 2001 onwards. Before that, there was no green building. You know, the people were not aware what is green building. So in 2001, so there were some agencies like a lead was there, Indian Green Building Council, which is a part of CII, then Griha. So these certification bodies, they have started this moment. And if you see today, so uh, because there are more than 10 billion square feet which are registered under Green Building Program and many buildings are uh, taking care of this Green Building approach now. In fact, the government policies are also encouraging this green building moment, that is also the something which is a positive move in the country. But still I feel, if you look into the, the kind of development we are expecting in India by 2030, because our population is going to be double, the kind of development which, are, which is going to happen. So I would say this green building moment requires really just a very big push from the government side and also the push, you know, through sensitizing the mind of stakeholders. Because right now, there is only 5 to 7% buildings which are going under green. So otherwise, you know, if you see the 95% component in our country, which are very, very, you know, just based on the conventional principles and conventional approach. So if you are talking about those uh, majority of 95% of uh, you know, buildings which are uh, not green, uh, don't you think that uh, we need to create an awareness about the return on investment on the green projects? And how do you evaluate the return on investment of green projects? Uh, what are the considerations you have? I think there are so many myths and uh, realities, you know, and the wrong perceptions in the market. Uh, the people feel that when you build green, so it's expensive, or when you, uh, you know, follow green practices, so there is a lot of cost involved there. There is a capex involvement in that. So how to recover that? So that is all mindset we need to uh, basically sensitize. Otherwise, if you see uh, the most of the projects uh, currently, the, they are supposed to follow some government norms, environmental principles. There are some environmental conditions which you are supposed to follow under the development control rules in various states of India where your design cannot be approved without those environmental safeguards. So most of the environmental safeguards are basically an integral part of your policy. So when, when you look into holistically all these elements, I think you can reduce the cost, which you have wrong perception because that's increasing the cost. And if you also look into the life cycle cost of the project, then you understand that in two years, three years, when I recover my investment, then after that, it is my saving and I'm helping environment also and I'm looking forward for a better tomorrow. Right. So do you have uh, adequate uh, number of uh, green certification and green building uh, consultant or their agencies across the country to uh, meet that 95% of the buildings which are not green? Uh, certification bodies are there, of course. But I personally feel because I'm an environmentalist, because I'm from environment background and environment expert, I feel that every project on this planet must have sustainability principles in design, in purchase, in construction practice, and during operation as well. In India, I still feel that we need a lot of skill because skill is still, you know, it's a big gap. Because to fill this 95% gap, 
we need a lot of experts sustainability expert green building experts because right now if you see the education structure in india especially the colleges especially the schools you will find that environment subject is not you know given importance at that level which it should be so that is the point we need to have you know more green building education in the educational uh, curriculum we need to have architectural uh, education which basically make your all architects green architect all engineers are green engineer so even the product side so all people who are doing sales and marketing also in mba you know they are doing or master of business management so i feel that they should also know the when they are purchasing products they are selling products so what is the green element into that so i think those sort of skill development and uh, expertise we need to enhance in the market so government uh, government policy interventions and also through educational institutions uh, interventions because they need to come ahead and they need to uh, include this curriculum in the their educational structure so that will really help us yeah but can incentive alone promote green buildings that's the question again you know the two kind of people in the market one is with very rigid and conventional approach okay there are definitely incentive works because they feel that now i have to take this fsi benefit i will go green the people where uh, the green building is a component of policy intervention so where the people you know they are supposed to follow green because it is a part of enforcement so that is the second thing and third is like some organization we find that uh, under their social responsibility they follow green as a standard benchmark they make all their projects green so it is i feel that we all are stakeholders on this planet and each and everyone has to fulfill its responsibility so it is not something when it is incentive only then i should make green in fact every building should be green on the planet this is what right. i feel right so uh, do you expect any kind of uh, big announcement from the government during the union budget which is going to come another uh, th- uh, in the next couple of months so i always feel that something should happen you know government should encourage but definitely uh, there are few policies which are encouraging green building by default because incentive itself is a government policy intervention right this is what you know that is attracting already the decision makers and stakeholders i feel that government should now uh, encourage uh, stakeholders by providing some sort of you know the tax benefits to the product suppliers who are into green products and green manufacturers so some sort of you know the maybe gst compensation or some tax rebates like we are service consultants a green consultant we are also paying gst right. and we also you know if we get also some sort of incentive so we can encourage more builders it seems to be very yeah. optimistic for the future of green building in uh, india so according to you what the future holds for green building industry in india it's not about what future holds about green building i think uh, building green itself is a future for india because okay. future for india future for planet i would say when you build green you are making your future better and you are making future of generation better so i would say this is must now this is a indeed exercise now so there is no option ki whether it will do how it will work or not it must work and we need to build green and live green this is what i feel so uh, with that we would like to wrap up today's interactive session with ms mala singh the green entrepreneur the green crusader thank you so much for being there we will stay tuned for more such empowering interactions don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel and press the bell icon goodbye